talk to me a little bit about how much you know delayed spending you saw in the three months where you were closed because of COVID and how much of that revenue you'll be able to get back from customers. Oh, thank you, Francine. You know, the first thing to be said is that uh, jewelry is a very long time and safe industry for in the eyes of our clients because when you buy a piece of jewelry you buy a piece of eternity so this is kind of a you know safe investment and there is also um, a question of celebration you buy jewelry to mark a very special occasion so there's always a celebration even during pandemic and a birthday an anniversary and we saw our clients coming back after lockdown uh, wishing to actually uh, celebrate after time what they missed during the lockdown. And yes, we have um, kind of a recovery uh, these uh, past days and we are quite uh, optimistic for the future. Um, Sabina, where are you seeing a recovery? Is it a specific region or is it a specific section of some of the things that you, know, you sell? So you have high-end jewelry, you have like a medium range and, and a more yes. accessible range. One of the most uh, um, in, you know, strongest uh, um, problems nowadays is the lack of tourism. Tourists were uh, obviously uh, keeping up the sales very much. And so now we see uh, clients coming from uh, local cities. Uh, for example, people that were, are traveling less now across Europe, for example, for um, shopping occasions, and so they buy locally. And basically, uh, the big um, regions such as uh, China, of course, but also Japan and the main European countries, France, uh, Germany, Italy, are still uh, on the uh, celebratory uh, side in terms of jewelry. Uh, give me a sense of how COVID-19 has actually, you know, impacted your strategy longer term. Are you going to sell more to the APAC region because we see demand there going quite strong? Or are you going to sell more on the Internet? Well, yes, we are going to sell more on the APAC region, also for obvious reasons of uh, investing in a marketplace that is absolutely uh, very energetic. Um, the slightest uh, difference is in the way we sell. Uh, basically, uh, you know, in jewelry, there is a lot of one-to-one uh, -one client relation. Uh, our sales managers calling their clients and establishing this very personalized relationship that can be made even without uh, going to the store. So distance, remote sales is really the name of the game today. In America, they call it by the curb because basically you can call your sales assistant, uh, choose the, the good and the parcel is delivered to you uh, on the curb um, and you don't even have to interact really in the store for all the safety reasons we know. So it's a mix of strategically choosing the areas in the world where the clients are keen to still um, purchase and uh, methodologies in terms of uh, how to approach the clients that are slightly different than uh, pre-COVID. So d does it mean, Sabina, that we could see the closing of certain stores or does it mean, for example, um, that, you know, the, the way you look at the geography will change? Is it also making it more difficult, for example, to source gems or is this something that just happened for a couple of months and now you're back on a more normal footing? Well, fortunately, I think that the big uh, companies and big brands like us, we have uh, a great treasure in our vaults with uh, gems and, uh, and uh, stones that have been acquired over years. And so that is not a problem short term. And I don't think it will be a problem uh, in the future for, for sourcing. Um, the most important thing is to really create a situation uh, where the experience of uh, buying an exceptional pro product remains an outstanding experience. So uh, we have to crack the way to make the online experience absolutely as memorable as a, a store experience. And so that is really a new way that I would say that uh, this is um, also what COVID pushed everybody to be much more innovative, much more keen to um, find new ways of, uh, um, you know, interact with the clients that is not, again, the traditional store uh, interaction. And for that, I'm quite, um, you know, excited because there is a, a totally new frontier to go find. 
And um, we see that uh, the, the initiatives that we have started uh, putting in place, like this very special and very intimate uh, moment uh, with our faithful clients, are paying back. And um, the storytelling, the reasons to celebrate with a jewel are very important um, matters. And I'm glad that, um, you know, we, we can be on that uh, front with our brand. Um, Sabine, I was speaking to actually our uh, Bloomberg intelligence, you, you know, analyst on luxury, and they were saying that the focus on watches and luxury in general is a smart one because it'll probably be one of the, the most increasing um, sales growth in the coming years yes. because of durability. And it's just like a slightly different section. But given all of the talk that we've had over LVMH and Tiffany, that really has gone wrong. Are you expecting more consolidation in the jewelry phase? D does it actually impact any of your work? Well, unfortunately, I, I cannot predict these type of things because it would be too easy to try to, to foresee the future. But um, for sure, you know, uh, brands and companies that have a very legitimate place on this market because they are admired, recognized, uh, seriously established for years, have much more chances to survive, for sure, vis-a-vis -vis those brands that have been created uh, more recently, maybe on a marketing concept, simply. So um, on my part, I am very keen to see luxury still uh, developed on the basis of uh, quality, preciousness, uh, craftsmanship. And in Pomelato, for example, we have 100 goldsmith, master goldsmith in-house that bring their savoir-faire to each and every piece of our jewelry. And that is a, a point of difference that consumers um, understand, and they do make the difference. And therefore, all these big companies that have, um, again, this, uh, this very uh, strong and fierceful attention to quality and, and details and what makes the difference and the and the preciousness are the ones that are going to win the game. How much does size matter, Sabina? How, how much bigger do you think Pomelato can become in the next five to ten years? Well, we are definitely uh, um, aiming at growing uh, all over the world. Uh, of course, our domestic markets are rather European so far, but uh, the investments, of course, are very much uh, skewed to Asia. Um, but uh, again, this is a brand born 50 years ago in Milan, in Italy, with a very strong sense of uh, Italian elegance and style. And I think that, you know, the made in Italy is basically a brand per se and uh, has this uh, amazing attractions all over the world because it says this is elegance, this is style, this is uh, that touch of class that um, Italy has been recognized uh, for, for, for centuries. And so um, I trust that uh, this brand can really develop uh, a lot, uh, also thanks to this um, added value, to this twist that comes from our origins and the absolute uh, Italian genius that is really recognized uh, all over the world.